All right, we are back playing the dolls. I, I can already tell I am toasted because I see a, a Toon Link avatar. <clears throat> and that scares me. Poke Doku Master Puzzle. Groundwater. Aquatheria. Evolved by item. Monotype. Evolved by item. Vaporeon. Final Evolution Evolved by Item. Sylveon. No! Is that really not the final evolution? Does it go one level above? Oh, it doesn't evolve by an item. It's by a friendship with the fairy Pokemon. Oh my god, get a life. I'm talking to Game Freak. I'm not talking to you. Jolteon. Paldia plus Area Zero DLC. Say Pachirishu G Max. Water and ground. Okay, I gotta think about that one. Water monotype. You ever hear of a little dude by the name of Tentacool? You ever hear of a little dude by the name of Polywag? There you go. Monotype final evolution. Radicate. <laughs> 0 0.8! We're so back! Ground type final evolution. Nido Queen. Hmm. Water ground. I'm just like, this is not happening. I do feel like Paldia is the cold area though, right? Maybe maybe Pachirisu is a monotype. Maybe I'll fuck myself, I guess, is what they're saying to me. Water ground. I remember. This is for the editors. Ludwig, in, in my brain. Ground Pokemon tend to be Pokemon that shake the ground when they walk, not Pokemon that are made of the ground or live in the ground. Okay. They shake the ground when they move. It's simple. It must be Reggie. Hydro... <laughs> Sweat. Um, wait, wait, whoa, hang on. What about Eternatus? How about um, Liqui... Liqui... Liqui Rockemon? Sh shakes the ground when it moves. A massive water Pokemon. Like... A Pokemon by the name of Blastoise G-Max. The bro has a, a artillery shell on his back. Okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Whooper. Whooper Paldea. Ursa Luna. Jason Kelsey's in this game. Bro's getting ready to take... Well, I guess Jason Kelsey would have two hands in front because he's holding the ball. He's a center. Sand slash Alola. Diplin? It's a candy apple Pokemon, huh? Whooper? Whooper shakes the ground when he walks, huh? Who knew? Luminion. Most common? Quagsire. And Clodsire. <laughs> and Serial Edge. These are the most common, huh? How about least common? What the hell is Toad Scruel? Wormadam Sandy? <laughs> we are not going to make it, man. We are not going to make it. Water plus ground equals mud? Yeah, but if I pick the mud Pokemon, like, muck is like ground poison, right? Like, he's not ground water. Doesn't make any damn sense, bro. Swampert works? That makes sense. Muck's just poison? What mud is purple? I don't know. If you spill some Kool-Aid in the sandbox, maybe? Well, obviously, you and I aren't living the same lives. We're not hanging out in the same locations. I'm still confused why this game's in the rotation. Bro, look, it gets the people going. It gets me pumped up. It gets them pumped up. That <laughs> it's, it's like... Um, Steven Spielberg films, you know? They do one for, one for you and one for me. This one's usually for me, but I'm not sure. 
obviously, uh, hang on, we can make a better clip here. Ads are based on your uh, browsing history and these. When a streamer gets served, alumni and members of professional groups get preferred rates. Ads for the bank. <gasps> I simply don't know what this is, but I'm going to guess that it is Carol, or um, uh, Brooklyn. I'm going to guess that it's Brooklyn. Yes! <laughs> I've not seen it, but I have seen the Alshit bot, and it's magnificent. How? It looked like it was from this era, based on the costumes. And I know that it's a movie about an Irish family that moves to New York in the early 20th century, maybe the late 19th century. Kind of has that vibe. Maybe, you know, she's being introduced to someone for the chance to, like, have a job or something like that. I don't know. And then I, I always get it confused with Carol because Carol is like, are they both Kate Blanchett? Why was Irish racism so normalized? It's going to sound crazy. I was thinking of that the other day. Like, there's so many movies, because it's based on history. There's so many movies where, like, Italian immigrants in America and Irish immigrants in America are subject to racism. And now in 2024, I'm like, those are two of the most American stereotypes that there are. That's, like, Ben Affleck and Tony Soprano. Like, they're they're... Paragons of American culture. Like, I almost feel like nobody is more American than someone who lives in Boston whose great-grandparents were Irish or someone who lives in New York whose great-grandparents were Sicilian. What about Mark Wahlberg? Well, we don't talk about Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we do talk about Mark Wahlberg, to be fair. That's disingenuous. Former Heisman finalist Manti Teo got drafted by this AFC West franchise. The Los Angeles Rams. What? Didn't he play for the Rams? He played for the Chargers? Yeah, but didn't he also play for the Rams? I thought the bro was on the Rams. Drafted? You, you don't understand. You're, you're literally like a Stephen Hawking. And I'm like a little fucking ant in your freshman year physics class. And you're like, well, you forgot about black body radiation. It's like, bitch, I don't even know statics yet. Was he on the Rams? The Rams are in the NFC. Is that what I fucking asked? I didn't say what conference are the Rams in, okay? I, I, said, I said I don't like pancakes. That doesn't mean I love waffles, bro. He was not on the Rams. Okay, was that so hard? After three seasons with the Louisville Colonels, Honus Wagner played the rest of his MLB career with this National League team, from 1900 to 1917, I was there. It's the, um, um, it's the Chicago Black Sox, okay? It's the Chicago White Sox? All right, it is not. <laughs> Brooklyn Dodgers didn't exist yet. Pittsburgh Pirates, oh, Pittsburgh Pirates. It's the most famous baseball card of all time. What about the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card that they said they printed like a thousand of, but actually they printed two million of? Because I know about that one. I don't know shit about Honus Wagner. Totaling nine medals across two Olympics. Macros! This is the Torpedo. Ian Thorpe, the Australian swimmer. B is the symbol on the periodic table for boron. This is William Shatner and Nicholas Holt. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Nicholas Holt. Yeah! 
<laughs> oh, man. Sprite Tropical. This came in flavors like Aruba Jam and Berry Clear. This might be Sprite Remix. Sprite Remix. Okay. It's not a Sprite Remix. It's just called a Remix. I would have said Patton Oswalt for sure. I don't want to, like... I don't care about Patton Oswalt. I'm not white knighting for Patton Oswalt. But he's literally, like, probably 51 years old. And William Shatner is, like, 87. In fact, now that I think he might actually be, like, 93 years old. Like... Give him, give him some credit here. I like when he sang Rocket Man. No, you don't. You like when Stewie sang it on Family Guy. But it's not okay to say you like Family Guy anymore because of Woke. So now you got to pretend like, yeah, no, I saw it. I saw it on TV when I was a kid in my time machine. Name the actress based on her filmography. <clears throat> Spin City, American Horror Story, Friday Night Lights, Nashville, Hayden Panettiere. No! Really? Connie Britton? I'll be honest with you, I don't even know who that is. You thought she was in Spin City? Yeah, I thought she could be like a little kid on Spin City. She could be like Michael J. Fox's daughter or something. In Nashville? Well, I know there's the Robert Altman movie, but I also, isn't there like a TV show called Nashville that Hayden Panettiere's in? Yes, there is. Well, see, that's not a, uh, it's not a bad guess then, all things considered. She is in Nashville. She co-stars with Connie Britton. See, here, this is why I'm one of a kind, Okay. Because you guys were like, uh, Nashville is a movie that came out in 1974. You need to watch more mid-content, or at least have an awareness of it. Um, there's, the problem is that we've only got two kinds of people in the world, geniuses and dummies. We need somebody that bridges the gap between geniuses and dummies. We need like an academic who isn't afraid to watch Crank High Voltage, and we need uh, an idiot who isn't afraid to sit down and watch Battleship Potemkin. We need, we need to cross the aisle, okay? I'm happy to exist in the aisle, even though it's a compromised position to be in, because all the dummies are like, you're smart, fuck you, and all the smart people are like, you're pretending to be smart, you're dumb, fuck you. Well, not the main stars... Brie Larson, Dave Franco, Nick Offerman, Jake Johnson, Ellie Kemper, and Dakota Johnson <clears throat> all appear in this 2012 buddy cop action comedy. What is the movie known as 21 Jump Street? Yes, okay. Certainly, yeah, Dakota Johnson's in that. Ellie Kemper is a teacher who loves Channing Tatum. Jake Johnson must play another police officer. Dave Franco is the, the drug dealer. This blues rock band is most known for Run Around and Hook. This is Blues Traveler. Nah, I'm done. Six correct, three incorrect. Why you gotta give me the run around? It's a surefire way to keep things up, but all it does is slow me down. I, I am proud of myself. At least check this out. Listen, sure, we got the NFL question wrong. By the way, this distribution is everything wrong with America, except I don't know why you would really give a shit about the Olympics, to be fair. 17% on the celebrity mashup. 17% on the Olympics. Nobody knows Ian Thorpe, the Thorpedo, just because uh, Michael Phelps ended up taking like all of his records, like the Olympics right after he retired. Like That's not really fair. The Torpedo's a legend. Me when I'm from Canberra? No, he is though. He was in the 2000 Sydney Olympics. He was like the poster boy. And then 04, I don't even remember. And then 08, 
was Usain Bolt and Michael Phelps going like crazy mode. And then 2012 was also Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt going crazy mode. And then I stopped watching the Summer Olympics. It is kind of crazy that both of the the biggest superstars from the 2008 Olympics were famous for eating chicken nuggets. <laughs> like literally the two most popular, well, maybe not most popular, but close to the top. The two athletes most emblematic of high performance were like, yeah, I eat McDonald's before I, I do my heat. That's crazy, man. Just another data point saying that maybe a large Coke Zero is a health potion. Okay, From the fountain, not from the can. From the can, it's like um, a, a healing salve. From the fountain with a little ice in it, I think it might be a, a health pot. That's just my two cents, though. Pillow Ruby Cobra Croc. Lightning Shuttlecock Moccasin Boa. Um, I feel like Snake... Is a, is a trick today. Ruby, Java, Basic, and Python are all programming languages. A loafer, a moccasin, a slipper, and a crock are slip-on comfortable shoes. A boa? Hmm, let me think about this. Head dress, shuttlecock, lightning. I'm like, are these compound words? Head dress, shuttlecock, lightning, and... Wait, 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 okay, hang on. I'm getting too deep. I'm like... Head, cock, bra... <laughs> um... Inspiration, lightning. You can be struck by alternate names for badminton tools. Union, Union Station, Lightning Station, Lightning McQueen, Shuttlecock. I, I need to channel Dakota Johnson uh, Johnson for this. <clears throat> I know you're going to see Madam Web. In fact, I can see the future. I think you're going to see it twice. Maybe the editor should have seen it twice. I've heard it's not very good. That's not... She didn't really do anything to warrant that kind of... It's kind of punching... It's striking while the iron is hot, but it is punching down a little bit. Anybody that's going to see Madam Web in theaters deserves to lose their money. Let's just be honest. You could smell it coming off the screen from six months out. Now, let me think about this for a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to see it tonight. There's still time. There's still time, okay? Things you rest your head upon. Cobra. Cobra, Cobra Commander, Lightning McQueen. <laughs> Inspi you're struck by lightning. You're struck by inspiration. You are struck by a shuttlecock if the other person playing badminton is really good. Union. Union, things you join. Things you pay dues, 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 things that bargain, shuttlecock, anagrams for oba, cobra, boa. Is there such a thing as a pillow snake? Like this, this feels very gettable, but... And yet I cannot. Shuttlecock. 
I'm, I, I feel like maybe compound words make sense. I don't think lightning is a compound word, though. It's like light and inning. <laughs> Wrong. Okay. So it's not even one away, which means there's two and two. Now, which ones are connected? I feel like headdress and shuttlecock are the most syntactically similar. What about words that only have one vowel? Mm, nope. What about <laughs> words that only have two? Words that only have one vowel. Lightning? <laughs> it's just lightning, bro. Words with many eyes. So it's not this. We know that for sure. I have, I'm, I'm cooked. Shuffle me for a second. Maybe that'll help me out. No, now I can't remember which ones I picked. Oh, no. Pillow. You can have a pillow fight. A cock fight. A snake fight. Lightning McQueen. Lightning McQueen. Pillow. Things you flip. <laughs> when it's too hot. <laughs> hmm. Ill is in here. And um, bra. And headdress, cobra, shuttlecock, lightning, union. I'm cooked, lads. We got one to three right. No, we got one to two, right? Sorry. Union. Inspiration. Pello. Boa. I'm fucking washed, lads. I picked the same permutation, didn't I? Things made with feathers. Things that can, <laughs> it was things that can strike. <laughs> I said struck like 10 times, man. Things made with feathers, I could have gotten. I, I guess cobra strike is a real phrase. Union, oh, it's a homophone. It's a homophone, a strike, an organized Absence of labor or to be hit by something. That's not a homophone. What does it mean when two words have the same spelling but different meanings? Homonym. Thank you. Homonym. Just has different meanings. I love the eight question marks followed by there's no word for it, followed by a thousand people saying what the word for it is. <laughs> mm, a homonym answer. Mm? It reminds me of in Chib's chat yesterday, he was playing Balatro, and one guy was like, you know, you can make this hand. And then Chib was like, no, I fucking can't. How can I do it? And then like a hundred people were like, don't worry, it's just one guy. And then that one guy was fucking right. People were, they, they were like, ban him, ban him, kill him, like execute him in the public square. They were, they were chomping at the bit to, to get him removed from the chat. And then he was right. I, on the other hand, was not the one guy, nor did I defend the one guy. I just waited until it was clear that the one guy was right and said, wow, you guys really went for his throat. <laughs> Set of 24 for the human skeleton. Beers. Teeth. Teeth? Tooth. Actress Perez. Rosie. With everything tallied up. 
total. Tennis slang for winning a set 6-0, which comes from the shape of zero. I'll have what she's having. This doesn't look right. To quickly write something down, jots. Prophet swallowed by a whale, Jonah, which means this is in all. The Osage people. Scrabble pieces are tiles. Buys opposite is sell. Ribs! Oh, I was thinking of uh, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Bagel? They call it a bagel? There is no escape. Tennis is so fun. So true. I want my daughter, I mean, my daughter, she can pursue whatever hobby she wants to pursue, but she, for obvious reasons, reminds me of myself when I was a kid. Team sports, with my personality, were fine, but not the best. Because either I would not be the best on the team, and that was demoralizing, or I would be the best on the team, and then I would resent everybody else for not being as good. Which really is not a good look for, like, you know, nine-year-old wreck softball. <laughs> like, there's no reason to be, to be maxing in that department. But... Tennis, chess, some, a, a singular hobby you can do by yourself that you can focus on. That way when you win, you're like, yes, it was just me. You suck. And when you lose, you're like, I'm nothing. That's, the, that's what really got me pogged up as a kid for sure. She's destined to be a gamer. Honestly, I don't think that she... Well, I mean, it, she's three, so there's lots of wiggle room still. She doesn't seem to be that interested in video games. She likes to watch the AI play Mario Party against itself. Whenever I'm like, you know, daddy owns that game, like we could play it together. She's like, no, I'm not, why would I want to do that? That seems like that's exhausting. I'm just watching the computer play against itself. Like she's already entertained. She's normal. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. Weekend of July 22nd, 1988. Flight voice? I'm not even going to be alive then. $84 million from Touchstone Pictures. Back in the days where... <laughs> Holy, brother! Must have just expanded. Could be a 20th Century Fox. That could be a Ridley Scott joint. Just keep an eye on it. $84 million, week five, starring Bob Hoskins. In 1988, this has to be Who Framed Roger Rabbit. There's no other option. Paramount Pictures, week four, 15% decline, starring Eddie Murphy from 1988. Hmm, how, how much does a guest cost? A guest costs you 20 and a tagline costs you 40. I would go tagline on this just so I'm not going Beverly Hills Cop 2, Beverly Hills Cop 3, 48 hours. This, see, this summer, Prince Akeem discovers America. This is coming to America. That's right. We are using genuine strategy here to play the game. We're not just throwing guesses out there into the ether. We're, we're box office game maxing. 20th Century Fox just went up 10x in its second week. Starring Bruce Willis from 1988. Again, give me a tagline. It's Die Hard 1. Okay, see, that's, I was going to guess Die Hard with a Vengeance. I'm glad we invested on that one. We might want to take some tactical risks to keep ourselves pumping here. It is kind of crazy. I guess Die Hard had a sleeper build, right? Because this is not... when I, Normally you see like a, a, a gain like this. It's a situation where it's like um, the holdovers. It came out with like... 300 theaters and then everybody loved it and then it expanded to like 2000 so like what's what's going on with Die Hard? maybe it came out and people were like 
I don't expect it to be that good because it's a Bruce Willis-led action movie. And then they were like, whoa! Warner Brothers, second week. Clint Eastwood, I am not going to know it. I need help. Dirty Harry just learned a new game. Dirty Harry. Um, the Deadpool. Yes! Guys, I know that the Dirty Harry sequels are all called like Deadpool, Maximum Lethality, Prudent Force, something like that. The Deadpool sounds like uh, a game because there is a game based on Deadpool. Robert De Niro, 1988, 7 milli. I need a tagline. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Action, comedy, crime. I need help. Too, way too early for analyze that or analyze this. Charles Grodin. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, wait, before we do that, give me director. Martin, I need your help. A bounty hunter pursues a former mafia accountant who embezzled $15 million of mob money. He is also being chased by a rival bounty hunter, the FBI, and his old mob boss. The movie is Midnight Run. I just don't know it, honestly. 28th percentile? What a scam! <laughs> it's a great movie. I feel like I've never even heard of Midnight Run. Put it on the watch list. Can somebody Google where is Midnight Run in Canada and um, sort through the AI trash to tell me which one is true? No, we're not going to do that. Okay. 28th percentile. That's a damn... That's a scam, bro. Crave, Stars, and the Cineplex app. All right, we will not be watching Midnight Run anytime soon. <laughs> Crave, Stars, and the Cineplex app. Colin Farrell, Martin McDonough, Irish, the Banshees of Inna Sharon. Leonardo DiCaprio, Basketball Diaries, The Basketball Diaries. Sing <laughs> in the Rain, Gene Kelly. And Sing might be the connection here. Sing Street, which is in Ireland. Okay, we have to do, we have to refactor. That's fine. Donkey is um, the Banshees of Inner Sharon. <clears throat> We're going to do this in as few swaps as possible. I'm stupid. That should be here. <laughs> Singing in the Rain, Gene Kelly. It's got to be a member of the Talking Pictures. Leonardo DiCaprio, Elijah Wood. Okay, we got there. We got there. Love and Basketball. Green Street Hooligans. Singing in the Rain, The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Sing Street. Love and basketball? What a basketball? I don't watch any of that shit. The last basketball movie I watched was The Sixth Man. Kid turns into a ghost. Cheats their way to the state championship. Teaches kids entirely the wrong lesson, in my opinion. That's why, like, when I was a child athlete, I didn't even pray before games. Because I think it's not fair to invoke the Almighty's help in a contest of juvenile sports. Let's just let our skills and our training do the talking, okay? Oh, I've lived a more... Penitent life, so bro's gonna help me shoot 100 at the free throw line? Like, that's not fair. Like, let's just leave that shit out of it and play basketball, bro. Let's just hoop. 
<clears throat> Moneyball, World War Z, Troy, Movies Which Star, Brad Pitt, Law Abiding Citizen, 300, Phantom of the Opera, Movies Which Star, Gerard Butler, Greenland is the other one. So the, the hard swap here would be, wait, I see a Russell Crowe connection, Beautiful Mind, LA Confidential, and The Nice Guys and Gladiator. Snatch needs to be over here. So here's how you, here's, here's this, this is um, Elizabeth Taylor movies. Bet you thought I didn't know Kino. So we need Gladiator over here, Liz Taylor over here. We're going to move The Nice Guys to here. Let me think of it, because there's, there's a way to maximize swaps. We go like this, which then allows us to hot swap here. But then we still got to do one more hot swap. All right, well, whatever. Then, movies that take place in the ancient era. It's that simple. Movies that deal with Greece, ancient Greece, ancient times, whatever. Greece, Greece, Greece. I'm assuming, oh, I guess it's like, it's Egypt, obviously, but it's not Greece, it's Rome, because Mark Anthony and Julius Caesar are chilling. Okay, fair enough. That was a good one. I don't think I'm telling anybody that anything they didn't already know. I guess Gladiator's in Rome, too. You're right. Um, but you might have forgotten, Russell Crowe is a fucking sick actor, bro. I know he's been in a lot of trash since, I don't know, like American Gangster, but bro can act, dude. L.A. Confidential is insanely good. The Insider is insanely good. Master and Commander, obviously Gladiator. There's more. I mean, like, I just don't want to be the guy to say the nice guys because it, it's starting to approach, like, Reddit core, but that doesn't mean it's not good. A Beautiful Mind, kind of like a, a little bit of a paint-by-numbers, like, best picture engineered in a lab, but at the same time, still good. American Gangster is good, bro. Russell Crowe can, he can freaking act. Movie to movie. Russell Crowe kind of looks like old Gerard Butler. I don't think you're crazy for that one, librarian. I think that makes sense. I can, I can definitely see that. Poor things to migration. Uh, I'm going to start with migration because I don't know who's in this. Uh, <laughs> haven't, haven't caught this one yet. This has Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, and other individuals in it. Okay, okay, okay. Pretty, pretty typical for, a, for an animated film. Star-studded cast of AI-generated individuals. Tom Cruise was in this one. I didn't know that. All right. Just taking a peek. Now, let's take... It's better to do it without scrolling. So we wish to get to Emma Stone. What's a great way to connect to Emma Stone? I would say Crazy Stupid Love, Steve Carell, Julianne Moore, Marissa Tomei, Ryan Gosling. So obviously there's going to be a connection somewhere in here. Me personally, where I would go with this is I would go Elizabeth Banks to... Am I crazy to think that Eric Bana is in Crazy Stupid Love? In which case we could go Elizabeth Banks, Zach and Miri make a porno. Seth Rogen, Funny People, Eric Bana, Crazy Stupid Love. No, okay, now I'm, okay, now we got to find our way out. This is what it's all about. Eric Bana. I could just go Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, Super Bad, Emma Stone, bro. What am I doing? Like we could go back. But there's no going back. We have to go Eric Bana, Hulk. You know what? We're going we're gonna to go Russell Crowe and we're going to find our way from there. We're going to Hulk, Jennifer Connelly, B 
Beautiful Mind. No, I saw it. Top Gun Maverick. Tom Cruise. Tropic Thunder. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Collateral. Mark Ruffalo. There we go. We got there. Time. Celebrating Marvel. Stan Lee. Motherfucking. Just the cheating. Cheating step. Celebrating fucking. African. <laughs> No, we will not be using Aquafina to connect the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. All caps, Willem Dafoe was the Green Goblin. Me in Discord VC when no one's talked for three seconds. The architect and the builder arrive calmly from their escalator with a sense of purpose. This is a little game by the name of VVV VVV V. It's not rated. It's a little. This is Undertale. No! <laughs> Cut the ro geometry dash. This is geometry dash. Yes! <laughs> I've seen uh, my daughter watching a YouTube video of this. In what world is that Undertale? Well, it looked like a mobile game, so. I used context clues to guess that it was Undertale. What's the appeal? Um, Super Hexagon is just a coiled geometry dash. Geometry dash is just like an elongated Super Hexagon. So if something appeals to you about Super Hexagon, geometry dash might appeal to you the same way. Not for the photosensitive among us, though. This is uh, Castlevania, the Symphony of the Ten Rings. This is Hades, the game known as Hades. This is, it's not Hades. <laughs> this is Children of Morta, Children. Oh, they have it, bro! Yes! Least appreciated Northern Lion Let's Play, Children of Morta. That was a cool game. I'm kind of surprised it had enough impact to make it into a game, though, but... If it's so cool, why'd you stop playing it? Hey, uh, gamers, if you hate live service loot treadmill games, why do you keep asking people why they stopped playing a game that had a beginning, a middle, and an end? I mean, you're in your 30s. Like, I, I, no offense, I think it's time to start, like, demonstrating the kind of media you want to interface with instead of just, like, slurping it up. I'm 23. Well, I wasn't talking to you, okay? I was talking to Wolfski. <laughs> They've been around. Kirby and the Legend of the Seven Fingers. Bam! Super Mario Brothers 2. That's a shy guy, bro. Also known as Doki Doki Panic. Yes! Bowser! He's had some work done. They were really cooking with Super Mario Brothers 2. I hate Super Mario Brothers 2, just by the way. I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a bad game. But you know the same way people are like, they get anxiety when they hear the noise of Sonic the Hedgehog drowning? That's how I feel when I go into one of those like interdimensional doors in Super Mario Brothers 2 and those weird masks start chasing you while you're trying to get the, the key. That is like, that, as a kid, that was, was not my favorite moment. But it does have some goaded innovations. When Birdo shoots the pellet at you and you can jump on the pellet and break the laws of physics and grab the pellet you're on top of to throw back at Birdo... That was a Pogridge moment, okay?
super? No, let's pick something from 2010. We will pick a game by the name of Rock Band 3. <laughs> the Beatles Rock Band. Okay. Nope. Uh, it's not... Uh, this is good, guys. It's not from an auditory perspective. That really narrows it down. It's not a music party game, and it did not come out on... Uh, this is relevant. It's not put on any of these consoles, at least. So let's go with something from the more modern generation. Perhaps a Rise Son of Rome. Hey, a third-person game, more recent than 2013, that came out probably, I would guess, on the PC. Let's call this third-person. I would call this a game that is by the name of a game called The Witcher 3. Wild Hunt. Hmm. Turns out that did come out on... No, it didn't. Okay, never mind. This is not an insane guess. WB was involved in it in some way, Prob or Bandai Namco, which actually means that this could be like a Dark Souls 3? Am I crazy? Is today the day? Oh, it's a wrong saga. But it's probably, in that case, it's probably Sekiro Shadows Die. Oh! <laughs> it's a Bandai Namco. It's um, the one. Um, Neo! Neo 1. No! <laughs> That's Koei Tecmo, not Bandai Namco, you fool. Clue me. Unreal Engine. 2019. PC and current gen consoles as of the time. Unreal Engine third person role playing adventure game from Bandai Namco. Uh, the Surge 2. Oh! <laughs> Lords of the Fallen. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've, I'm like knocking on the door and I don't know what it is. Mostly, I can't think of anything that Bandai Namco has made, bro. Or published, at least. Bandai Namco. Steel Rising. Doesn't exist. It came out last year. They don't even have it in the database. Okay, fine. So Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope. Mario and fucking 64 golf carts. Code Vein! I played this! Code Vein! Code Vein. That's a tough pull for me. Everything was pointing towards a, a Souls-inspired game, but for me to summon Code Vein is kind of like... It's ambitious, let's put it that way. Fair play, fair play. Ain't that a Mountain Dew flavor? No, it's a Souls game where when it came out, people were like, whoa, it's even better than Souls. And you were like, really? And then you realize that those people are just compromised. Here we are, five years later, can't even remember the name. And Lemmy's playing Dark Souls 2. So you tell me which one had a more lasting cultural footprint. A two-word romance drama from 2005. A little movie by the name of Match Point, perhaps? If love does indeed conquer all, it should win hearts across America. If not, then its focus on a tragic stigma will remain as valid as its story suggests. I don't know. It's a modern age... It's Brokeback Mountain! Brokeback Mountain! We got that. That's too easy. Your celebrating love heartbreaker score is 100% out of one play. We take those. They should remake Brokeback Mountain. And I'm thinking it's Barry Keoghan. And uh, let's say in the other role, Ian McKellen. No, 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 no. Army Hammer. Army Hammer. That could be his comeback movie. Army Hammer and Brokeback Mountain be like, I wish I knew how to quit eaten you <laughs> like it's not it's not elegant it's not funny 
nothing. Movie grid. This is where I apply my trade. Charlize Theron, Ewan McGregor, Demi Moore. One word title, ignore the. Monster. We take those. No. Begins with a vowel. Released from 1990 to 2000. I don't think people remember Long Shot, so we're going Long Shot. Is that not the name of this movie? Or is it Dull Long? Okay, fine. Just because you asked for it, young adult, I'm cooked. Is she not in the Long Shot? Oh, 2010! No! <laughs> delete cookies! Delete. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You could probably just refresh, right? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ewan McGregor, one word title. Train spotting 2. Oh, I don't know, is that. Let's go, we'll go train spotting, fine. Begins with a vowel. 1990 to 2010. Don't write Dr. Sleep, man. Don't write Dr. Sleep. Uh, begins with a vowel is annoying. Guess a movie from 1990. I mean, there's a lot. I'm going to go with. I mean, the Star Wars ones are guaranteed to split the vote, which is nice. I guess I would go episode three if I'm splitting the vote. It's probably more likely to get less people than something like Down With Love, where people would be, think they're smart and be like, I'm not going to pick a Star Wars. But because there's so many Star Wars, they start like segmented. They have like an upper maximum. I'll settle. 9.3 is pretty okay. It starts with a vowel is annoying. One word title. Strip tease. Not surprising. Now, 1990 to 2010, you say G.I. Jane. I say Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. G.I. Jane might have been lower than 16.4. And then a vowel. Starts with a vowel. Well, I mean, this is a gimme. We'll just, we'll, we'll play straight up the devil's advocate on that one. And that doesn't bother me in the slightest. But begins with a vowel is annoying, man. Charlize Theron. Mad Max. The Fast and Furious films. Atomic Blonde! Not my best performance, but... Oh, Aeon Flux would have fucking crushed. You're so right. The Impossible, I would say. And then A Few Good Men. Hey, no, G.I. Jane was like way... I, I actually kind of crushed the Demi Moore part here, except not having enough guesses. Monster, Atomic Blonde, Monster, Bodies, Bodies, bo This is like, that's real tough. Ewan McGregor gotta be one of the... Uh, best actors of our time with the worst filmography for sure. Like, I'm not saying he hasn't been in good movies, but like the ratio of good movies to forgettable films, given his relative star power around the release of the Star Wars movies, is the ratio is all fucked up. Could be, could be better today. Could be better. Food guesser. Oh, that's not a daily. We want to do the daily. <clears throat> okay. These are crepes. Am I insane? Are these crepes? They look like they have bananas inside of them. Are they crepes or flautas? Or like a... I don't know, like a brie quesadilla. I think they're crepes from France, bro. Oh, Mexico. That's the, your picture for a quesadilla? That, that, those, I don't live in Mexico, okay? Those do not look like the quesadillas we get. 
The quesadillas we get are firmly sealed with liquid cement and they have cheddar cheese on the inside, okay? I don't know what's up with this. This might be a Oaxaca cheese or something. This is gyudon from Japan. I mean, it's, I guess it's not on rice, but... <gasps> what? Korea? This is bulgogi from South Korea? Oh. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's marinated beef, man. It's marinated beef. This shit gotta be in Ireland. Corned crew beans, 80 cents each. I don't know if they use cents, but I gotta try. <laughs> yep, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. They're considered a nostalgic and traditional dish. I'm not gonna hold it against you. As you say, as soon as a food becomes corned, it really <laughs> narrows down. I don't even know what it means to corn something. <laughs> And then crew beans just was like, it was like not English. Like it's English, but not from England, I should say. You know what? I mean, we beat the average, but I'm a little embarrassed. We definitely could have gotten the perfect score today. I love the, the histogram. It only had like one data point. Spell check. Dude, we got some good freaking dailies in the daily hopper now. We got some fresh meat. Ambitious. An adjective meaning having or controlled by... Easy. Crumpet. A mm, noun meaning a, a small, round, un... I type scone. <laughs> All right, time to lock in. Simmer. Surefire, a adjective mean inner title, a adjective meaning of relating to least insane easy word. Tensile, a adjective meaning stagflation, a noun meaning previous, a adjective meaning going mm, car, obsidian, a noun meaning Minecraft, efficient, a noun meaning. She's I spelled, oh, it's, uh, I should always listen to the definition. It's efficient, efficient, like someone who's of officiating your wedding. Pompeii, a yes. geographical name meaning mortification, a noun meaning enervating, a verb meaning to reduce the mental or moral vigor of. Enervatus comes from Latin with E and nervous meaning out of and sinew, respect. Motherfucker. <laughs> annoyance. A noun meaning the act. I'm getting a little annoyance with you. Stealthily. An adjective meaning. Kind of an embarrassing performance today. 12 correct. Yeah, we spelled crumpet way wrong. Officiant, enervating with one E. We were never going to get enervating, right? But we should have gotten 14 out of 15, to be honest. Why'd you write scone? Because I was trying to think of a synonym for crumpet to make a joke, and then my brain couldn't keep two parallel processes going at the same time, so they corrupted each other's data stream. So I wrote scone instead of crumpet. You know what, just for that, enjoy some puck doku. Boston Bruins, Olympic gold. Patrice, Patrice Bergeron. Boston Bruins, Olympic silver. Blake Wheeler. No! What? <clears throat> really? He wasn't on the 2010 American Olympic team that lost to Canada? in the most famous Olympic goal of all time, next to the one that went in off of Tommy Salo's head. I mean, I don't think Tim Thomas, maybe Tim Thomas did play for that team. It was before he went insane, right? Okay. World Juniors under 20 gold. Hmm. 
All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that Patrice Bergeron is definitely on the list here. I'm going to have to simmer on that one for a second. Either a recent draft pick who played for the U.S. or Finland or a, a 2000s-era draft pick who played for Canada. So we got to just simmer on that for a minute. Philadelphia Flyers Olympic gold for Canada. I got to go with Claude Giroux. I got to go with um, Chris Pronger. Philadelphia Flyers Olympic silver. Me personally, in this world, I take a um, Ron Hextall. That doesn't make sense. It does. It's simply like, Olympic silver. How about a little Mike Richter on the on the New York Rangers? Yay! New York Rangers Olympic gold. I got to say Henrik Lundqvist in 2006. New York Rangers World Juniors under 20 gold. 120 gold. Dipped in Mama Liz's chili oil. This one, maybe like a, this, hear me out here. What about Joel Otto? Oh. Olympic silver. 98. I feel like America won silver. Or Finland? In 2002, America won silver. In 2006, I don't know, because Canada got eliminated early, so I stopped watching. 2010, America won silver. 2014, Sweden won silver. 2018, uh, Germany won silver. 2022 should be easiest to remember, but I don't recall at all. <laughs> did they do the, did they do an Olympics in 2022? Who won who won the I know there were no NHLers, but like did it get screwed up because of COVID? They did them in 2020. They did them last year? Where? 2018 was South Korea. Twenty twenty two was we're in China? Beijing again? I don't recall. I don't recall. So in two thousand two, America won silver. An American player on the two thousand two Olympic team, Robert Esch. Yo, it's not right. <laughs> Robert Esch didn't make the, the American Olympic team. This is a good puzzle, though. I like this puzzle. It wasn't like guys who had eight penalty minutes in the 12th game of the season. Jean Leclerc, of course. Brad Marchand was an easy guess. Lundqvist, Lundqvist, Laf Lafreniere? Really? Oh, I guess they, because, so Lafreniere was on the Canadian junior team when they played in Vancouver and they got blown out and didn't even make the medal round. Um, but I guess he was an underager and then next year they won when they were playing somewhere where there was no pressure like um, Lithuania. Fair enough. That was a good puzzle. It was good to, good to stretch my brain a little bit. Travley? Hmm, this is a tough one. Papua New Guinea to Myanmar. Indonesia is a, a must guess. Then from there, you go to, at some point, you're going to connect to Thailand. And then you simply must connect to Malaysia. And never mind, it's the easiest guess of my life. What place did Canada did this year? I don't know what you're asking me. This year what? What place did Canada did this year? 
in 2024? I got to put some respect on the Canadian government, by the way. I got my passport renewed. I went to the passport office last week of January. They told me that it would, my passport would arrive the last week of February. <laughs> my ass picked it up from the, the post office yesterday. It came like 10 days early. Maybe even 12 days early. So they lied? Well, yeah, but in a good way. They over, under-promised and over-delivered. Not to brag, but in Sweden, you can get it pretty much the same day. Yeah, well, not to brag, but in Canada, um, if you and a stranger are like waiting for a bus, you might make eye contact and say, hello, have a nice day to them. You won't stand 10 feet away and both look at the same Swedish memes on your phone in the dead of winter. So, you know what? We've all got stuff going for us, I suppose. Not to brag, but in Canada, when you're over at your friend's house as a kid and his mom says dinner time, she sets out a plate for you with the same food that the rest of the family is eating instead of just leaving you alone in your friend's room while they eat dinner and you starve. Not to brag or anything. Do you have any responses? Yeah, nice passport, though. <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm not just like you weren't bragging. I'm not bragging in exactly the same fashion, okay? Slash marker. The dolls. We do that in Mexico, too? 